Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on Chess.com's Tactics Trainer and going to do another group of three puzzles and simply share my thoughts along the way. So, in this first one, we're playing as white. Her. <laughs> we're playing as black. I'm off to, uh, off to a good start here. <laughs> okay. Uh, this king is kind of short on squares. Uh, my feeling, uh, I must say, is that this initial check is not correct because the king can run here. Uh, so I'm thinking about this move first, but now revisiting this again, <laughs> if that helps any. Um, kind of going back and forth, these two being the candidate moves. Uh, queen a1 and bishop to b2. Uh, I am seeing what the solution is to this one. Um, yeah, this is a mate puzzle. And it does involve this initial check on a1, with only then an ensuing check on b4. Playing this move first, uh, while it takes away this, uh, let's say, runaway square. Oop, let's get rid of the... Uh, Getting hit with the color scheme gambit. It's been a while, but uh, yeah, that gambit appears every now and then. <laughs> um, yeah, what I was going to say is if we play bishop b4 first, this uh, quiet uh, defensive move of d2, it gives white a, an opportunity to play c3 and have the c2 square available for the king. Uh, also worth noting is that given a move for white, there is no good checking move against the black king, so we're in no serious danger here as black. There may be uh, these quiet moves available to us because there is no great attack against our king. So I'm thinking that after queen a1 check king d2, we could then play bishop b4, and after c3 in this case we can capture on c3 with our bishop. Note with our queen on a1, she has some influence on c3, whether she's on a5 or a1. She's trained on the c3 square. Right now, directly, once she's on a1, she has an indirect influence on c3. So I'm pretty sure this is a mate puzzle with queen a1, king d2, bishop b4, c3, only move. Bishop takes pawn. If king to c2, we would take on b2 with our queen, and that would be mate. But this one is turning out to be a mate in how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Queen a1, king d2, bishop b4, c3. Bishop takes pawn, pawn takes bishop. Queen takes pawn, and actually that's already mate. It's a mate in 4. I was for some reason thinking the king goes... Uh, to c2 or to the back rank and then the rook comes down here. This is actually a mate in four. So let's put it on the board. Queen a1, bishop b4. These are only replies by white. And after this capture here, that's the ball game. Okay, that's not a bad start. Let's try puzzle two. Team black. Let's get it right this time. All right, well, I'm immediately drawn to this square because there's a knight check. So we have some control of the dark squares if we need it by our knight, controlling f2, f4. Also seeing that the queen and king are on the same file, so the rook's eyes might start to light up some. Possibilities for forks or pins by the rook. Additionally, the queen is a bit short on squares. Yeah. She is definitely short on squares here. Um, for example, if we play g6, she doesn't have very many replies. Um, if she's going to... Well, she only has the g5 square. Hmm. Yeah, this feels like... Uh, 
a puzzle that takes advantage of a piece that is short on squares, some kind of queen trap. This pawn is pinned. Not sure how that's going to play a role, but it's really powerless. It's not really threatening the knight right now. I don't think that this rook will be relevant to this puzzle. This bishop is unprotected. How are we looking from a material standpoint where up a pawn is black? Can we take advantage of this unprotected bishop? The queen is also unprotected. I'm thinking it's more directed, this puzzle is more directed at uh, tackling this white queen somehow. Suppose g6. Queen here is the only saved square. How could we take advantage of the queen's position there? Hmm. It is a queen trap. g6, queen g5. And this is actually pretty tricky to spot. g6, queen g5, f6, attacking her further. Queen is defending that. Where would she go from g5? These squares are covered by the rook. All these squares covered. She would have to go to h6. And our last move of f6 is opening up a new square for our knight to play knight f7, and the queen is officially cooked. g6, queen g5, f6, queen h6, knight f7, and she's officially trapped. Yeah, it must be, this must be it. Directed at the queen. I didn't really see a way to take advantage of the bishop. Moves like, I don't know, queen here, setting up rook to e2, or just too slow. Gives white to, gives white a moment to bring a new piece involved, or involve a new piece, develop a new piece. Rook to e1, some rook to e1. But this is, I'm pretty sure this is it, just double checking, g6, queen g5, f6. Queen h6 is the only safe square. And then knight to f7 is the idea. Let's put it on the board. That is correct. And yep, it's solved from here. So I believe queen here would not be best at this stage. But rather, I don't know, I guess queen here. And you'd have a rook for queen exchange because queen h6, you're just going to get the queen for a minor piece. Or queen h6, knight f7, and then the queen goes back. But yeah, this is the trick here. Queen h6, knight f7, and she's trapped. All right, let's try one last one. Not too bad, these first two. Team white. Okay. A little bit scary here. Uh, our king is cut off as white, so we really need to act fast. Not quite threatening mate, but, you know, there are these checks and then we would have to block with the rook. Hmm. I think it's just going to be this quiet move. I don't, I'm not sure... What more there would be besides rook to h3 as a candidate move, to be perfectly honest. I don't see a way to improve the rook. I don't see what m moving this bishop would accomplish. Rook to h3 is threatening a bishop move with a discovered check mate. And also just the idea to move the bishop with check and capture the rook. Rook to h3, if a rook plays to c1 or d1, we simply block the check and give checkmate. There is no knight move with check. Um, yeah, this has to be it. Rook to h3 also defends the h2 square. If rook h3 and rook g2, we could just play to the corner. I don't see anything wrong with that. If then knight to f2, we would take the rook because rook on g2, knight on f2, there's a disconnect between the rooks. I don't see what else it would be besides rook to h3 in this one, to 
be perfectly honest. I have no other candidate moves here to even consider. It must be it. Um, well, let me back up for just a moment and say that I guess there is one other move to consider, and that is, uh, qu well, questioning the move order just a tad. You know, if this is the idea with rook h3 and bishop g4, maybe bishop, excuse me, rook h3, bishop g5 for mate, maybe going with this move first is worth considering, but I don't like this because if bishop g5, it's just not, it's not throwing a strong enough punch. Like, there are these moves of then rook to g2 check, rook takes h2, and then, you know, we're not even getting to the h3 square. So it's important that we establish our rook on h3 first and defend h2. We're not, al we're not allowing black to take on h2 and control h3. And by keeping the bishop on h4, we're preparing to meet these first rank checks with a bishop block. So this must be it. That is correct. And I'm almost certain we just go straight to the corner. Yeah, I, I actually, I didn't understand this problem as well as I should before I made that first move. Because I'm seeing what the trick is going to be now. Not knight to f2 after king h1, but rather g5. And then the trick is going to be bishop f2, which is an interference, disconnecting the rooks, and then we take the rook. Hmm. Maybe I, have to, I, I should have thought a bit more about where exactly to go with the king, because I guess this is also a fine move as well. King to f1. No, 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 no. It is important to go to h1 because king f1, they take the they take on h2. So we need to keep him defended, and now this is the key idea. Yeah, I wouldn't consider uh, me solve... I, I, I didn't see this one correctly to its end. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't give myself full credit for this because I, I should have seen that this was the idea. I, I referenced this knight to f2 move and why it was not working. And okay, well, they're going a little further here. I believe we just scoop up this knight and be content with the material advantage. You know, we could just take this knight right now. Would there be anything better? Yeah, I really couldn't have anticipated this uh, variation that the computer is throwing at us right now. But... I don't know, is there any great difference here? They're going to grab this rook if we move our king, so why not just grab this knight? I don't really see what the big difference would be. Am I missing something? I mean, this is simplest to just take the knight. I believe that that's what it would be. Yeah, that's the solution. Okay, that one wasn't too bad. Um, just recognizing... Rook to h3, bishop g5, that wasn't too difficult to uh, reason out why it was more important to insert rook h3 first. You needed to stop black from potentially controlling the h3 square in this one. Okay, not a bad set of three this time around. Uh, as usual, feel free to uh, leave any feedback, share how you did with these three in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next video. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.